Our first sponsor for the podcast is Inverted Gear. Inverted Gear sells jujitsu equipment. They sell gis, rash guards, shorts, all that cool stuff. They're really cool people, really great customer service. They have a cool blog. Check it out. Go to invertedgear.com. Type in the coupon code SHOWTHEART15. No spaces. You'll get 15% off and you will enjoy what you get. Our next sponsor is Chimera Coffee. Chimera Coffee is coffee from Dominican Republic infused with nootropics. If you don't know what nootropics are, they're things that help your brain run a little quicker, fire the synapses a little faster, help you remember words better. Just Google it. Trust me, you won't go wrong. It's a great tasting coffee and uh, you'll love it. Go to their website, chimeracoffee.com with a K, not .com with a K, coffee with a K, <laughs> and type in the coupon code show the art, no spaces, and you will get 10% off. Boom. Kenny, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. You are the voice of, I feel like, the people's MMA. Like, you're the <laughs> voice of how the people should sound when they talk about MMA. I like you, that. You don't give away, like, that... Uh, uh, what vibe am I thinking of, Mark? Like that, uh, that I don't know, mm. that Fox 5 vibe. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. No, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. It means a lot. Yeah, man. And uh, we're, we're fans of you. We've been fans of you for a long time, basically because we come from jiu-jitsu roots. I'm a brown belt. Marcos is a black belt. We've been training jiu-jitsu for so long. So you kind of like gravitate towards the the jiu-jitsu rooted MMA guys and we're from New Jersey very close to you in Boston so we kind of you know we're fans of you because of that that's that's the connection <laughs> <laughs> I love it we hear you're getting into jiu-jitsu competitions again is that true like what do you have any goals with that um yeah man uh, you know I I've uh I've really been able to train a lot more jiu-jitsu lately and um it's it, it, it's been amazing, man. You know, I, I retired because I, I injured my back. And, you know, the last few years uh, were really kind of up and down. It was really a roller coaster ride of feeling good and then not feeling great and, and all that stuff. So physically, it was a really um, a, a tough battle for me. You know, um, mm -hmm. not being able to do something that I love was awful, man, you know. Um, and first couple of years, I really couldn't train at all. And, and then, you know, I would train here and then not be able to train again for months and yeah. it was just it was rough and and so the last six months or i could maybe a little bit more than that been able to increase my my volume of training and you know as i felt better i said you know why not why not compete why not have some fun and i always feel that you know anytime i competed you know i, I feel like it's training underneath a, a magnifying glass mm. you can really see a lot of the mistakes that you're making and see how you respond um, mentally physically and, and all that stuff so sure. It was something I missed and, and, and definitely something um, I'm going to get back into. Nice. And uh, do you have any any future goals? Like, do you want to do the Worlds coming up? or? Um, you know, I, I don't know about uh, rolling with the young guys just yet, but uh, <laughs> I certainly certainly hope to um, compete in, in the Masters Worlds, you know, and see how that goes. But, you know, I, I compete with guys that are, you know, or I should say I train with guys that are obviously competing at a high level and, and the adult level and all that stuff and feel fine with them. But as far as competition rhythm uh, i think it takes a little bit of you know uh, getting to know kind of your style again and yeah. you know my style has changed uh, tremendously since they even retired or when i was competing back in brazilian jiu-jitsu competitions back in 1978 uh, so yeah you know it was uh, back in the grapplers quest time, days right <laughs> that's right that's right so it's uh you know um i just i just kind of want to get back in the groove of things man and, and uh kind of have fun with it even getting used to uh, placing those grips on the gi, that has to be a puzzling adjustment. It is. <laughs> yeah, man. It's funny. The gi is really what made things interesting for me again. You know, mm. I think it was something that I didn't realize how much I missed it. And, and when I put the gi back on, it was just, um, you know, I just love how complex it is and, and how much more thinking and planning and uh um, strategy goes on when when you when you put that damn thing on <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was talking to uh, a friend of mine the other day and we got into a discussion about gi and no gi and the, the differences and similarities but one thing that came up was like the difference can seem very simple and it is that no gi is simple gi is <laughs> it's just a little bit more interesting a little bit more 
complex. But the fun thing about Nogi is it's simple. Like, it's just this and that. The fun thing about Gi is that it's not so simple. <laughs> They're both right. hard. I'm not saying right. one's harder than the other. I'm just saying, like, sure. that's kind of a weird difference. Yeah, no, I think, you know, they use this cliche all the time, but it's kind of, it's kind of like checkers and chess in some ways, and it, it doesn't make it easy to, to win a checkers game against someone who's good at checkers. <laughs> um, but it, it just, you know, it, it just it makes it more complicated. You know, um, it, it really does. I, I think the gi and, and you know, I think no gi is is amazing as well. I mean, yeah. there's so many different things you have to be worried about. I, I real I love them both equally. I really do. And it's just uh, different strokes for different folks, I guess. <laughs> Definitely. How do you feel about like the modern day jujitsu game? Because you've been around in the jujitsu world. You came up as a jujitsu <laughs> guy for so long, and you you got to really see the evolution of of where it's going. And it's funny because like the gi route has gone its own evolved direction and the no gi route has gone its own way. How do you feel about the state of jujitsu nowadays? Uh, um, I have mixed feelings on it because, you know, there's uh, a certain amount of flair and, and technique that I really admire, and especially in regards to, you know, everyone talks about your bolo and, and all that stuff. And, yeah. You know, I, I, I think it's beautiful to see that kind of game. I, I think it really is. It can be fun to watch. It's extremely technical. However, I, I think that a certain amount of the newer generation are, are kind of losing the the, the very um, essential fundamentals uh, of jiu-jitsu. I think that they're missing out on some of the details on, on how to move and kind of skipping that process a little bit and, mm. and advancing immediately to the more advanced positions. And, and what happens in that process is that you kind of lose um, the very basis of what makes jiu-jitsu truly effective on, I guess, in, in more of a combat realm. And, and I think that if we, if we continue to head in that direction, you know, could it be that we become... Um, what a lot of the Taekwondo schools have become, and, and we lose that essence of being able to defend ourselves and, and, and understanding that Jiu-Jitsu was built for um, self-defense. It was built to protect yourself, um, and that, you know, maybe me being upside down, inverted, trying to do Baron Bolo on the street probably <laughs> is the best thing. I think it's yeah. obviously, you know, I, I think there's a lot of spots in Tedford, and they understand that, hey, sure. shit, if I did this on the street... Um, I would probably get pounded, and I think they're fully aware of that. And it, it's been a technique that's been very effective in competition um, for, for winning jujitsu competition, yeah. right? But um, I, I think that we we kind of need to kind of keep all of those things in mind. Is that you know are, are we getting away from what is making jujitsu truly effective and efficient? And and I think those are the questions that we kind of need to ask ourselves as mm. we train. You know, in whatever we're doing. You know, I was talking to Augusto Tanquino, who's uh, you know a jiu-jitsu world champion now, MMA fighter. He 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 said that his goal when he's competing or just training in jiu-jitsu is all about progression. Like that's why he doesn't really dive for crazy things, and he likes to progress. He likes to start, you know, here and then make his way through the guard. Uh, calmly um, controlled, and I feel like that's that's kind of what jujitsu is missing nowadays. Everyone's getting too excited, like you said, trying to get to the back, Baron Bolo. You're skipping, you're skip. You might be skipping key elements that make jujitsu what it is, and that's a controlling art, not necessarily a, a, a scramble art. And I feel like that's where jujitsu has gone with with the nogi and all the leg locks. We're having a much easier time we're figuring out how to win in the scramble and with the gi that's where the baron bolos and the the fancy moves come in people are getting comf more comfortable winning in the scramble they're trying to solve how to win in the scramble but i feel old school jujitsu um self-defense jujitsu is not about it's about stopping the scramble and controlling and i feel like mm. a lot of people are missing that element yeah, and I think there definitely is. You need to understand both, and you need to know how to do both. Um, and I think that was a great way to put it. And, and, you know, especially in regards to, you know, mixed martial arts, so, you know, how many jiu-jitsu champions and high-level jiu-jitsu guys have we seen lose position and, and not be able yeah. to keep a guy on their back and, mm. and all things like that. It, it pains me to see guys lose position uh, uh, out there when they have such great, you know, uh, ability to submit people. and. Yeah. and I think that's what it's about. Yeah, and, and, and 
you know, there, I guess there's two ways to approach it. And it's, you know, create the scramble so you can win it. Uh, but many times it, it, you're kind of, you're giving the guy a lot. Even if you're giving the guy a 40% chance, it's a pretty, pretty decent chance. And, you know, as opposed to kind of really being so focused on keeping position and, and taking away what uh, your opponent has. Yeah. And I feel like the scramble is very useful. It's opening up a door to open up a scramble is very useful when you're like ready to submit. Like, let's say you pass the guard. I feel like a guy like Rafael Mendez is really good at that. He controls the match until he's ready to get a dominant submission position. And he'll mm-hmm. pass the guard very efficiently. But once he gets past, he gives you a little space. So you feel like you can escape. That's when he takes the back and starts applying his submissions. I feel like the scr- opening the door for the scramble needs to be chosen very precisely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think Hoppe is one of those guys who really blends both so well. You know, uh, you know everyone talks about uh, his bolo and all the different things and all the fancy stuff he does. But this guy is very much rooted in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fundamentals, no doubt. Do you have a subscription to uh, MendezBros.com? <laughs> no, I do not. But uh, you should I, check I, it I, out. It's, it's really, yeah. really, really potent in jujitsu because they post their competition, they post their you know all their classes, and they post their roles with their students in class, and you really get to see their games open up. It's it's amazing, actually. Let's kind of segue that into your jujitsu training. I know you're you're starting to amp it up. You're starting to feel good. Your back is feeling good. What would you start to do? What would you start to change in your actual drilling, your actual jujitsu training, if you're going to start competing? Let's say in two months. Um, I guess I, I do a, a variety of things. Um, there's certain days that I'll pick and certain training sessions that I'll pick to focus on certain um, either techniques. That, techniques that I, I try to get away from a little bit. Like I, I, I try to drill certain techniques. I'll just take a, a session and just drill. Mm-hmm. And then there's other sessions where I'll focus on areas of my game. So I'll work on escapes. And that whole day, I'm just going to let guys get position or get the certain positions that I want to work. And all I'm going to do is just try to escape, escape, escape. And then there's other times where I'm going to work on, you know, um, a certain sweep or a certain guard, um, a certain passing style. Um, but a, a lot of what I've been working on lately, I guess, has been in regards to um, just feel and, and, and contact and, and being in contact with my opponent and, and being able to feel. And, and that's, you know, I guess it sounds very basic, but um, it, it's something that I feel that um, it, it goes a long way as mm. far as, you know, sensing what my opponent is trying to do ahead of time and taking away all those things. And I've really been... You know, adding little details into my game, but really hacking away at a lot of the uh, superfluous stuff that I used to do and, and, mm. and kind of simplifying my game the best that I can and, mm. and making it as efficient as possible. Because, you know, there were times where I would train with certain people and I would have a, a difficult time or whatever it was, but I, w- I would get the better of them or whatever it was, but I would be exhausted or, or I would be, you know, I would notice that, uh, you know, I'd just be winded or whatever it was. And I started asking myself, um, I guess, a very basic question. And I started asking myself, am I actually doing jujitsu? Mm. And, and I think that, I, you know, I, I really needed to find ways to become much more efficient and um, use less energy because, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm going to be 40 in a couple of weeks there and I guess <laughs> 10 days or whatever it is. I, I, I had to understand that, um, I'm not going to have that strength. I'm not going to have that flexibility. I'm not going to have that speed, um, all the time. Sure. And I think that I was, I was a good grappler, but maybe not great at jujitsu in some ways. I think there's mm. aspects of my game that were good and that was very much in line with the, with the philosophy of jujitsu, but I don't know about everything. So I really started dissecting my game and finding ways to be super efficient. So if I'm going against that badass black belt, I sh- it should be the same game that is if I'm going against that new blue belt. And, and I just really started asking, asking myself those questions and, and trying to stay in line with that and really try to have that in my mind at all times um, and, and kind of forget about 
the end goal or how I'm doing against that person or this person, if sure. I'm submitting that guy or that guy. I just try to focus really on, am I doing jujitsu? Would you say that it's kind of like you can't keep worrying about, like you said, the end goal 100% of the time and you can't worry about what had happened a transition before we kind of have to focus on living in the moment and keeping our eyes wide open. All right, he's doing this. I know he can do that. My positioning is here. I need to squat a little lower or I need to get a little tighter on this grip. And you can name a hundred different things that could happen in one moment. We need to start living in the moment so we can do jujitsu. But if we're focused on too many things in the past and in the future, it's hard to, you, you start having to rely on, on your speed and your strength to make up if you're if you miss the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, it's something I, I, I've been working on a lot in, in, in that regard as well. It, it's that mental approach. And, and I think, um, you know, in the last year or so, I've been doing a lot of different breathing exercises and meditation. And I think that that really helps you to stay present, you know, mm. and, and it's just being able to find that moment to those moment to moment exchanges and really be there and be aware. Um, I, I think is so huge for yeah. obviously for competition, but for, for jujitsu, because if you get lost in the translation, if your mind wanders, you're going to make a mistake and, and you're going to pay for it. And you'll, and you'll find out very quickly, you know, whether it's a guard pass mm. or uh, you think submitted or you missing that opportunity for submission. It's just, it, it, it really makes you and forces you to become super, super present. Yeah. I want to ask you this question, but I want to preface it with myself a little bit. I got my brown belt about a year, a little more than a year ago. So I, I feel like I'm finally starting to get what you're saying, literally what, what you're saying right now about living in the moment and kind of understanding that, that uh, movement to movement presence. But how can you put that in, in simpler terms to someone who's maybe a purple belt or a blue belt to get them ready for that feeling, to get them more open-minded to that feeling instead of, you know, just looking for the submission and just trying to pass it, just trying to sweep and... Jeez, you know, um, <laughs> I think it, 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 that's a difficult question, you know. I, I think there's a certain amount of trial and error that needs to take place for it to really sink in. I, I almost feel like you need to allow people to make those mistakes and get ahead of themselves <laughs> to know what is not like, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so true. A little bit, but that is kind of the, the higher level of things, and that's where the kind of spiritual element of, of Brazilian Shitsu comes into play, and I think that it's, honestly, man, I mean, it really, it's the only way to live, right? I, I mean, <laughs> it, if I'm going in to this conversation, and I am a karate guy, and you're talking to me about Brazilian Shitsu, I don't care what you're talking about <laughs> in regards to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because I'm seeing it in regards to my, my karate eyes and my background. Or mm. if I just had a really, you know, awful morning, I'm not even present in this conversation right now. Yeah. So it's, a, it's really about getting rid of everything and just understanding each exchange that you have, whether it's verbal, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's spiritual, just every single element and, and just being present for those moments. That's the only thing we have in this life is the present. I can't, I can't look back and nor can I allow my past to kind of come into play at any moment. Um, that's the only time that I'm fully open, that my brain is fully mm -hmm. receptive to what's transpiring. And, and, um, you know, as far as communicating that to your students, it's, it's step by step. That's the, that's the approach. It doesn't necessarily move. It doesn't necessarily mean move slowly. It just means approach it step by step. Mm -hmm. If you know jujitsu, you need to have it so ingrained in your, in your body that you're, you're reacting, that you're, you're already moving without having to think about it necessarily, yeah. that your body is just going on that automatic pilot, that feel where it will just respond instantaneously. Mm, that was deep. Gems. <laughs> so it's almost, you got to have one one foot in front of the other, step by step, be patient. It'll come. You need the trial and error. You need to fail. You need to win. It's funny because I feel like I, I live in the moment better. Like I, I pull off better transitions and I see what's coming a little better. When I come into the gym and I'm in a good mood and I'm just looking to have fun. But when I feel like right. when, I, when I come into the gym, like competition zone, and I'm in the zone, I'm in the mood to work hard, and I try to train really hard, I feel like I don't transition as well. <laughs> like, I might not get swept as easily, 
but I feel like I don't transition well, as well. You know what I'm saying? You're absolutely right, and I do the same thing. Why? Because we are so concerned with this thing about winning and losing mm. and perception. And you're a brown belt. I'm a black belt. He's a blue belt. He's a purple belt. I can't submit to him. I need to submit him. Mm. I need to be able to pass his guard in two minutes, in 30 seconds, yeah. in 15 seconds. We put these limits on ourselves. And we put these restrictions on ourselves, which immediately kind of lock up our bodies and lock up our brains when but that shouldn't even be on our mind. And it's easier said than done, right? Yeah. Like, even if you think about the feeling, think about the feeling of you getting submitted right now. It probably bothers you. And and, <laughs> and, and there's that, I'm trying to get rid of that myself of, like, eliminating the thought and eliminating that end goal of, like, am I trying to submit him? Am I trying to not get submitted? You know, like, just trying to take that out of the picture. And obviously there's certain goals and certain training sessions that I focus on and, and those things. But as far as that free role and that ability to go out and compete and, and free yourself of that stuff mentally, um, it, it's, I think that's the main goal because when we do have these restrictions on ourselves, oh, today I'm going to train hard. Today I'm going to try to do this and I'm going to try to do that. You immediately set yourself up you know, to to fail in some ways because you're putting restrictions. Mm. As soon as you eliminate that stuff, as soon as you're saying, I'm in a great mood and I'm just going to train, the whole, everything in jiu-jitsu is available to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, you don't, you don't put those pressures on yourself. And I think that's such a key, uh, concept to have, you know, um, yeah. and, and, and everything really. So would you say that that concept goes hand in hand with, with fighting MMA, with competing in MMA, and to add on, I feel like one guy that stands out a lot with living in the moment, being free, is Anderson Silva. For in, in the prime of his career, you always got the feeling that that's exactly what was going on in his brain. He wasn't concerned with yeah. winning or losing or making highlights. It was just like, how am I going to defeat this guy at this second? Not in two minutes. Not at the end of the It's like yeah. this very second. So would you say that MMA translates or just every sport translates that same kind of concept? Yeah, I like translates into that concept. I think, yeah, you know, if you think about anything that you're able to do, whether you're in a relationship, uh, whether you're doing a podcast, whether you're anything, it, it, you have to be super present and, and aware of those moment-to-moment -moment exchanges. And, and um, otherwise, you're just missing life. You're just missing life. Mm. And that's something that I, I truly didn't understand when I was competing and I was, when I was fighting, is that to to eliminate the crowd, to eliminate the pressure, to eliminate the rounds, to eliminate everything out mm. there, the booze, the, the cheers, and, and just go out to really free yourself of all those things so you can just compete and wow. do what you absolutely love. And I think that if you eliminate that stuff, now, you know, the gold medal, the bronze medal, it doesn't mean anything, mm -hmm. you know, even, you know, and, and once you put value in those things so, so much, what are you competing for? At the end of the day, you're really competing to become a better martial artist. You're, you're competing to become a better Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, fighter or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, you, you need to, that, that is the end goal above anything. You know, if, yeah. if you're beating a bunch of white belts and you get all these gold medals, are you really great? Are you really advancing? <laughs> You're only as great as who so you it, defeat, really. Right. And also, but even in the way that you do it, let's say I go into the world uh, next month and I go and I win, right? I beat everybody, mm -hmm. every single person. But then when you actually look at it, you go, oh, geez, oh, Kenny won by getting the half court every single match. And flattening it's the guy out, yeah. Wow. Like, is, is, do I have amazing jujitsu if I go out there and do that? I don't know. Do I have amazing jujitsu if I go out there and submit everybody? Mm. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's up to interpretation, and it's yeah. the way that you go about doing those things. I think the art is more important, I think, than anything else. So I think if you have that as at the forefront, that it's not you that's really competing, that you're trying to learn this beautiful art, then, man, there's no there's no limits on that. You know, it's like like writing a painting like i could see it and be like well yeah that's, that's cool and you might see it and go oh my god that's amazing or someone else might come in here and go that's a piece of shit <laughs> you know it, it's all it all depends on how you how you see it and, and what you you know put as your as your value so true now let me ask you a question about your mma career two parts did you ever feel that way in one of your one of your ufc fights one of your mma fights and part two as, as yep 
sorry, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, part two, just so we can get it out, because you'll probably go <laughs> off on this question. But part two, did yeah. you ever feel like one of your competitors was in that zone? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Let's see. So for me, I think I had three fights where I was fully present to the point where I don't even remember the fight as it was happening. Wow. I felt like there was something else going on. And I, I hate to sound like that, like weird, <laughs> you know, martial artist, but it really, I, I swear to you, the match started and then my hand was raised and that was it. And, wow. and, and it, was ama- it was amazing. And, and I felt like there was no energy. If you asked me if I was tired, if, if I felt stressed or if I heard anything, I mean, I didn't even hear, a, 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 I, I, you know, I couldn't hear anything. I, I couldn't see anything almost. It was just like I, I was in the zone and, and it felt great. And, and there was no, I don't know, I felt like there was no energy expended. Everything was perfect. It was beautiful. Wow, and, wow. and I've always tried to find out why that was. And I think it was, it was just me freeing myself of anything. I didn't think about anything, but I just took everything out of the equation and just said, I'm going to go do martial arts. And mm. that was it. And, 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 um, I, I think it was, yeah, it, it were some, some of the best moments of, of my life. And, and as far as people that I competed against, um, who was in that place, um, I'd say maybe BJ Penn probably was closest to that when I competed against him. I felt like he was, okay. he was in another place. I felt. And like you he, felt that? Like you can actually feel that? I think so. I can certainly feel that now when I when I roll with certain guys. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, the, the only guy I guess that I felt that with recently is someone like Homo Homo of the Hall, and, mm-hmm. and I feel like he he gets to that place. And and you know, I I think it, it's you know it, it's like getting to that higher spiritual plane where you know you're you're just at that level where I'm, I'm just going to let my body perform. I know this. That's it. Let's go. Mm-hmm. You know. What are the differences between like you fought some legends, and mm-hmm. uh, two of my favorite legends that you fought are uh, Jose Aldo and um, what's his face? <laughs> Who were we just talking about? BJ Penn. BJ uh, Penn. BJ Penn. Yeah. How did it feel competing against some of these guys? Were there any differences? Uh, were there similar similarities? Sorry, um, between the best guys that you've ever fought. Do you, do you feel like there was a difference in their mood and your mood? The vibe of these matches. They compared, right? How BJ compared to Jose? Or yeah, different? exactly. How did BJ feel? Yeah. You know, it, it, it sounds weird to say this, but again, I think, I don't know if it was like getting to that higher mental level or, you know, I don't think I was that great of a fighter when I fought BJ, but I felt like BJ was just, man, he was just at a different level. And, and I felt that he was just, he wasn't going to be beat that day. I, I, I just, if you know, I, I just had that feeling that it was just, mm. he was in that special place. And Jose, I didn't get that feeling necessarily. And I was, I mean, that cut to 145 pounds is, is the most miserable thing I've ever done. But, and so I, I just felt super weak and I just didn't, you know, I, I always, I don't know. I, I just didn't, didn't feel right, you okay. know, heading into that fight. I was cramping up, um, you know, right before the fight hit passed. So I only did like a five minute warm up to save everything I had. You know, that's how bad <laughs> the wake up was. But um, so for Jose, I felt like this fight feeling that bad. I felt like it was a winnable fight. Um, I never felt like he was doing anything that was like, you know, insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, felt I mean, like it was very competitive. His speed it was, was very his competitive. speed was on another, di- you know, was was on a different level. I think physically he was strong. Um, he felt great, you know, in that regard. Mm. But um, he didn't have that kind of aura that I, that I think BJ had maybe when, when we fought. Wow. Um, so I guess that that would be the, the only difference. You know, I think Jose was the hardest I've ever been kicked. BJ was the hardest I've ever been punched. So. Mm. And now, <laughs> um, why, yeah. why was there... Why, why did BJ have a bigger aura when in the time that you fought him as opposed to Jose Aldo? Because Aldo just, yeah. had a longer win streak at that point. Right. No, it's interesting to say because now, you know, as I think about it, was it me? Did I, did I put that restriction on myself? Mm. To, you know, because I hadn't looked up to BJ for so long, ah. you know, was it, was it totally mm. on me and, and my perception of BJ? Or was BJ truly... Um, you know, feeling good that day. I don't, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to distinguish sometimes, but I, 
my sense is that BJ was on that night, and, and he, he found his groove at 155 pounds at that point in his career, I think. He was training seriously. He knew what was working for him. Um, he knew what he had to do to win, mm-hmm. um, and he just he really had that kind of killer vibe to him. Um, and, and Jose very much had that same thing. I still think that he was developing to a certain extent. I, I think that above the martial skill it is that mental level, and I, I, I I'm not sure he's attained that yet. And he's still young, and, and I think it comes with there's a certain mm-hmm. amount of skill that you can attain that makes you unbelievable. But I think that there's a certain wisdom to a fighter that that sets them apart yet again. Yeah, mm-hmm. like a, a, a maturity in your martial arts game. Is that what you're, you're kind of getting at? Yeah, yes. Just an overall comfort mm-hmm. with yourself. And, and and your game. Yeah. I feel like I feel like MMA fighters, especially the 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 champions, because those are the guys we we look at the most, right? They're at the top of the divisions. I feel like they start you you start to understand when they get mature in their game, when they start winning a lot of fights by decision. I don't think it's a bad thing that people win by decision. A because you have the best fighting the best, so that's hard to win. Right. But also. Those champions, those guys that have a lot to lose and a lot to gain, it's it becomes more than that sometimes, and it becomes more about their game and and being mature and fighting the right fight, and that's why John can John Jones can go a couple of fights, like right now, by win them by decision instead of fabulous knockouts. And same thing with Aldo, like his last couple of fights, they, they weren't all knockouts. <clears throat> you know, it your your game becomes a little bit more mature. You're not taking these wild chances. Would you say that that kind of is an indicator of a maturity in their game? In, in some ways, yes. I, I, I think I think that there's a certain beauty to being super efficient. I mean, Damian Maya, for example, you know, and oh. it kills me. It pains me when I hear people say things like, "Oh, yeah, he's so boring," and blah blah blah. <laughs> like, dude, he's been hit maybe thirty times. I think he's been hit like forty some on times in his last five fights. Wow. I mean forty times total. That's crazy. His last five, like that's insane. And yeah. you think about the positions that it's achieving and the way that he's doing it and and he's not always submitting people, but his position alone is taking care of the fight, yeah. you know, for himself. I mean it's just it, it, it's beautiful, you know, if you think about how efficient, how effective he is. So mm-hmm. it, it's always in the manner in how you do it. You know, the, it, it, people love looking at the final result. And say, oh, well, he won by knockout, or this guy's a knockout artist. But, you know, they don't mention the fact that this guy, is, you know, his face was falling off at the end of the fight. Or, <laughs> you know, that you know uh, that he was hit uh, so a true. bunch of times. He was knocked down or almost submitted during that fight. But to see a perfect performance mm. and win by decision and not get hit very often, and, you know, I, I think it, it takes that extra level of, of um, maturity, certainly, skill, uh, and execution. And I think that's that next level. And, you know, you were talking about John Jones earlier. I think he's that, he is that special fighter who is able to free himself of a lot of those constraints. I'm not sure if he had that so much in the last fight against OSP. He still performed very well, in yeah. my opinion. I think right. a lot of the criticism was unwarranted, I think. But yeah, I, I, I do think that, for the most part, Whatever you want to say about John Jones, when he competes, boy, it's <laughs> unbelievable the way that he can free himself yeah. and, and allow himself to throw a spinning elbow and go for a crazy attack um, when other people are just frightened to do it in training. You yeah. know what I mean? It, 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 mm. it, it's really fun to see. And, and I guess another guy that I've trained with that, that has that certain aura or certain, has that ability to be super efficient and has that certain amount of wisdom is Ryan Hall. I, I really do think okay. he's a special martial artist and a guy that um, I think he's going to do a lot of great things in this sport and, and um, has, has a lot of special qualities mentally um, that, that separates him. Yeah, I mean, his performance against Artem in the finale was Damian Maya-esque. And I, don't, yeah. I can't think of anybody else really that has put on a performance that that um close to jujitsu dominance as we've ever seen it's funny like how many minutes have both those guys spent on people's backs in the last fight like yeah. they, they spent a lot of time hanging out on that back but it's literally the best position you can be in in a fight because the guy can't Absolutely. punch you and you're you're just dominant it's it's amazing mm-hmm. and it goes back to mm-hmm. what you were saying you know it's all about performing the 
art of your of whatever you're doing. If it's if it's fight, yeah. if it's a uh, boxing, it's it's not necessarily about hitting them. It's about getting. It's about hitting them without getting hit. And jujitsu is about controlling the position without them being able to do anything. And that's what Damien's right. doing. That's what he's doing. And uh, you know, I feel like another guy that's 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 doing that. Uh, is Jacare his fight against Vitor? Yeah. When he got to the ground, I'm sorry, Vitor, but <laughs> you know there was nothing you can do. There was nothing you can do. Yep. And uh, yeah, how did you feel about right that fight? Guard, I mean, he, he walked right through his guard, right. and you could see Vitor. Vitor, you know, unfortunately, I, I think that um, he, he's kind of a, a bully fighter, and by that I mean that when things are going well, mm-hmm. um, he's unstoppable. Yeah. But when he starts to experience um, pressure, Stress. pressure and adversity, <laughs> I, I think he folds a little bit, and, and uh, I, I think that uh, you know it, it did not go well for him when when he just kind of dropped the guard up against Cage. I mean, that second takedown wasn't even a takedown. He yeah. just kind of dumped the guard, and I said, "Ah, he doesn't want any of it." Yeah, it, that was it, very weird. Done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then not the place you want to be. Uh, you know, I think maybe one of the worst places in the world is to be underneath Ronaldo Jacare. So yeah. I don't think anybody wants to. Be. <laughs> when he can punch you, forget about a jujitsu yeah, match. Exactly. <laughs> or elbow. I mean, yeah. the guys that he's. A- the f- the crazy thing is, I was I was trying to uh, me and me and uh, uh, you know some of our training partners, students, and we were talking about the fight, and we're kind of like t- you know breaking it down and giving our thoughts. And the way I described him passing his guard was like surfing. He just surfed right through Vitor's guard, um, and got to the mount. And then once he got to the mount again, I was trying to t- I was trying to describe to people how patient he was in the mount. And I felt like his number one concern while he was mounting. Um, Vitor was was patience was control. It was punch. Punch was second. Control was first. That's why he didn't get bumped off. That's why it looked like it was an adult on top of a child. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And, and you could see it. I mean, Jacare is coming to that point in his career too, where he's really maturing so much. I mean, if you look at him when he was over in Strike Force, yeah. compared to where he is now yeah. in his career, it's, it's night and day, and and. Uh, I'm happy for him. He's a great guy, and, and uh, I, I love watching him compete. I've been, man, I've been watching that kid since he was competing as a purple belt, smashing everybody in Brazil. You know, <laughs> so to see where he was and where he is now, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and he's a lot of people don't talk about this, but obviously we know he was a jiu-jitsu world champion, one of the best ever, right? Mm-hmm. He can mm-hmm. he can be that Bo Jackson type guy where if he wins. In MMA, in, in not MMA, he already won an MMA Strike Force champion. But if he wins in the UFC, the highest level of MMA competition, he can be that guy who 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 is a world champion in multiple sports. Because jujitsu and MMA yeah. are are different. At the end of the day, the goal is ultimately a little different. So I feel like he can be one of those guys that, like Cormier. Corm- I mean, Cormier was 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 yeah. an outstanding wrestler. But what what the difference is is what Jacare has won. In jiu-jitsu terms, it's not, you know, a, it's hard to describe because jiu-jitsu hasn't been, like, professionalized, if, if you will, right. right? But the fact that, the, but the way it's structured is all the best fight the best at the end of the day. And he beat the best. So in jiu-jitsu, in my eyes, he's, he's equivalent to a UFC champion. So no, I, definitely, I, man. I, I mean, he's elite. He's elite. And even their dude, you could throw into the conversation yeah, as well. As definitely. Guy who, he won Abu Dhabi. He was a black belt world champ. Mm. Um, now UFC, you know, was the <laughs> UFC world champ. So, Yikes! <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's just there's some amazing athletes, and I think that we're we're really starting to see a, a great comfort level for some high level Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys that are transitioning their their art over very well to, to mixed martial arts. Sure, and it's it's amazing. It's great to see. For a long time, we were seeing that with wrestlers. They were adapting very a lot easier than the jiu-jitsu guys. And now the jiu-jitsu guys are finally starting to catch up, right? I agree, man. Definitely. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the upcoming fights. Um, what fight is getting you excited in the next 199-200? Uh, geez, I, I mean, there's a lot of fights. I'm really intrigued with the, with the Rockhold vibe and fight and how that's going to go down. Mm-hmm. I know that. You know, Rockhold had a staff infection in the last fight. I think he had hurt his neck or his back as well. Weidman, uh, I think, broke his foot before the fight. Yeah. You know, so they, they both had a lot of issues heading into the last fight. It, it was pretty epic. And this one, I think, is going to be awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. You know, Dominic Cruz, your eye favor, is going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, 
No, I, even prior to that, uh, Cody Garbrandt and Thomas Almeida oh, is man. a fight that you know people are kind of sleeping on. Those guys are, are definitely two knockout artists. And, um, they're they're going to go at it. I mean, Almeida is one of the most exciting fighters mm-hmm. uh, I've seen in a long, long time out of Brazil. I think he's 20 and 0, 19 knockouts. The, the guy's a phenom. And yeah. Cody, Cody's got a lot of power, and, and uh, a lot of people over at Team Alpha Male think very, very highly of him. Uh, Think sure. he could be a future champ, so that that's going to be a good one, man. But oh. so, so many good fights. Also on that card is Hennon Burrell versus Jeremy Stevens. Yes, I know oh people are sleeping God. on that one, man. I mean, that one uh, someone's getting knocked out, and that's the way I see it. Someone is definitely getting hurt in that one. So I'm curious to see how Hennon performs at 45. I think it's definitely a weight class that suits him much better, and and I think we're going to see a much better performance out of him. But uh-huh. now you see, I mean, Jeremy Stevens, man. Oh I, I mean, God. he is he is. Crazy knockout power. Yeah. He, had, he had knocked up power like 170 pounds. Forget mm. 145. So um, that that that's going to be good. UFC 200. Do you have any? I know you don't. You probably don't want to make any picks, but little 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 predictions of how fights may go between the the main event and the co-main event. How do you think? Yeah, sure, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go no, ahead. I was just going to say, how do you think like uh, the the rematch of Aldo and Frankie will go? You know, um, this is tricky because. You know, you were talking about, you know, how the consistency of Jose Aldo and um, how he was undefeated for a long time. Um, people do crazy things when when they lose and when they believe that they can be defeated now. And, mm-hmm. and Jose Aldo had that for so long. And getting knocked out in, was it 13 seconds or 16 yeah. seconds, whatever it was, I, I mean, to really mess with your head. So I, I, I really curious to see how he bounces back from that. Now it could it could go the other way, and he could just might be, you know, training like a maniac. I, I think he was doing some uh, interview of the other day, and uh, you know, he he has I think one or two black eyes, so he's obviously <laughs> training very hard now. Yeah. Um, I think that you know what what better motivation it, uh, is it than you know getting knocked out, and, and I think he understands that the game is changing, the game is evolving all the time, and, and he needs to step up his game. And Frankie Edgar is a guy that man. <laughs> it doesn't matter who he's fighting. Frankie Edgar is going to come to fight. Yeah. He's going to come to perform. The guy is so good at executing game plans. He has a tremendous uh, team of coaches around him, Ricardo Almeida and um, Mark Henry and, and all the guys. and they, they do such a great job. And, and, and Frankie just is so disciplined when he goes out there to compete sure. and make very few mistakes. And, and I don't know, man. I mean, that one uh, is really a topic for me. I, I really don't know which way I'm going to go on that one. Both, both guys, you know, there's a lot of question marks with with Jose, and, and Frankie, I think, is the more consistent performer. We know what we're going to get with Frankie Edgar. Mm-hmm. And Jose, we just don't know. Is it going to be the killer who's over in WBC, or is it going to be a guy who's, you know, a, a little bit timid? I don't yeah. know. I mean, that's, that's so interesting, like you said, because a, a knockout loss, or just a loss in general from a guy who's who's been so consistent, can either wind up very bad for him, like you said, it could do something to his head, or it could turn him into like a high-risk taker, uh, exciting, just go-for-the-kill fighter like like Aldo was back in WEC when he was a lot younger and more enthusiastic. Yep. But uh, yeah, it, it's like you said, it's going to be very, very interesting. And what about John Jones versus Cormier number two? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you know this, this one. This one is another interesting fight, and, and you know, for a long time, I, I think people saw Daniel Cormier as as the only hope, the the only guy capable of, of beating someone like John Jones, and I, I still think he is capable of doing it. Mm-hmm. I, I think um, he needs to go out there and and have a much different game plan than what he did against John Jones last fight. Though, yeah, I, I think it needs to be a completely different approach, and. It, it, you know, if there's one thing that we found out about uh, about John Jones is that physically he responds very well to adversity. That right. and things are, are, aren't going well. Like if he's hurt or if he's bleeding or if he's cut, he's going to continue to fight. He's got a chin. We saw that against Gustafson. Um, you know, even when he's not training hard, he's got the heart to go all five rounds, and he's going to try to to fight. He's never going to quit. You yeah. know. Uh, and that's where DC kind of went wrong in that last fight. I think his approach was more to break John Jones. Yeah. And I remember having a conversation with him, and I told him, 
he's never shown anything in his past fights that he's going to quit. And that, that idea that John Jones is going to give up on the stool or give up during the fight, I mean, you're hoping for something. You're hoping for a big, big, uh, you know, that's a big act. And, and I think that for, for John Jones, I think he does get frustrated on, on a mental level when he's not in control. And I think that BC kind of needs to approach it on that level. He okay. needs to fight on his terms and not let John Jones dictate where the fight takes place. And there needs to be some frustration and um, some amount of leading the dance when he goes out there to fight someone like John Jones. And, sure. And, and I think that that's the key. I, I mean, it, it's much easier said than done. I think John Jones <laughs> is uh, probably the, the pound for pound best fighter uh, to ever walk the planet. But uh, everyone has their weaknesses and vulnerabilities, and, and um, it, it's that's going to be another great fight, man. I know DC's working extremely hard, and I know John Jones is. There's one guy he doesn't want to lose to with Dave Cormier, <laughs> yeah. so uh, it, it, it's going to be fun. Sure, and and going along with what you're saying about DC kind of kind of failing in the last two rounds, not giving up, but just that's what defeated him. I feel like in his next two fights after that against um, against uh, Anthony Johnson. Anthony Johnson and um, specifically Gustafson, he corrected that yeah. he corrected that that wrongdoing in his last two rounds 100%. against Gustafson. He pushed the pace even more. You could tell he was trying to prove a point, like to himself. Yes. I, I yeah. absolutely agree. And 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 getting, you know, and, and having that first five round fight, you know, uh, against a high level opponent is a completely different thing, man. It it, mm. it, it can throw you. And, and I think that um, you know he thought that he could take a round off here and there, and you just, you just can't, man. Not not against someone like John Jones. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he was prepared for you know what 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 that meant sure yeah. but now he is interestingly yeah. enough but will that make a difference against john jones it, it, like you said there's so much riding on this fight from both competitors but like i like i heard from dc uh I, I forget where the interview was but he was saying you know i'm gonna come into this fight to fight like and win a fight yeah. not to beat john jones and i thought right. that was so interesting that that change in his mental approach I feel like that can make a big difference as well. I, I absolutely agree, and that's kind of what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, when you expect certain things, um, especially in a fight, when you expect a certain result, and you know, you think if I do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to again. You know, these are kind of the same thing we were talking about earlier. When yeah. you put certain strength and you and you um, kind of put these limits on how a fight or how a match or how a training session is going to go. You're immediately you're immediately kind of fighting with blinders on. Mm. Uh, you don't open yourself up to all the possibilities that could happen. You're not just going out there and just fighting, right? It's it, it's a totally different uh, approach mentally, and I think Daniel is, is in a much better place. Sure, I feel like it's not always about the best martial artist. It's so it's it's usually comes down to who's the best competitor the best fighter and what i mean by that is guys like anderson silva that can that can do all these various martial arts and have these epic moments in their game that make them a great martial artist he's not always going to be the victor a lot of times it's going to be the best competitor right the one with the best game plan and i feel like that's where john jones comes in he's not necessarily the best and i don't mean this to disrespect him but he's not necessarily sure. the best martial artist out there but he is the best competitor. That's 100% for sure. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree with that. And I think, again, it's that mental level. It's amazing what we could do when we believe, when we have a, uh, a certain amount of faith in ourselves. And, and, and I think John Jones absolutely has that. Uh, you know, is he the most technical fighter in the world? No. I, you know, if you look at, you know, his wrestling compared to Daniel Cormier, it's not better. He hasn't wrestled in the Olympics. Yeah. But he out wrestled DC the last fight. Mm -hmm. And does he have better Brazilian jiu-jitsu than Vitor Belfort? <laughs> no, but he submitted Vitor Belfort. Yeah. You know, when he fought Shogun, did he have better Muay Thai skills than Shogun? No, but he ended up knocking him out with a shot to the liver. You know what I mean? It's like, he knows how to perform. He knows how to fight. Um, and mentally, he has this amazing faith in himself. Yeah. Um, and he frees himself when he's out there. He, he allows himself to compete. He doesn't put pressure on himself. He doesn't think about what's going to happen. He's extremely present. Mm. Well, on that note, uh, I know you got to go. 
again, we really appreciate you coming on. This has been a great experience for us. And please, you know, if you have any parting words to bestow upon us, any words of wisdom, please do so. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, no, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, awesome talking to you. And, and, and anytime you guys want to do this again, I'd be more than happy. And uh, I, I think, you know, any words of wisdom would be, I, I would just say train hard, uh, but, but train smart. Uh, you know, be, be kind to yourself, be present, and, uh, and think about the art first. And ask yourself, you know, are you grappling or are you doing jujitsu? Mm. Uh, I think those, those are the most important concepts. And um, I appreciate your time, guys. It was good talking to you. Oof. For sure, man. Thank you so much. And guys, check out the Onik and Florian podcast. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you soon, brother. Take care, man. All right, man. Take care, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye. Hey, this is Kenny. The best way to get in contact with me is to text me at this number. Uh, I may be out of the country. And, Kenny, uh, get back into the country. <laughs>